Have you ever found yourself marveling at the mechanical genius that is your car's engine? It's a marvel of human ingenuity, isn't it? Every day, these machines power us from point A to point B, often without a second thought from us. But what really makes them tick? At the heart of it all are engines, the lifeblood of our vehicles. They come in all shapes and sizes, but primarily, there are two main types, internal and external combustion engines. Internal combustion engines, like the one in your car, ignite fuel-air mixtures within the engine's cylinders, generating power. On the other hand, external combustion engines, like those found in steam locomotives, produce power by heating a separate working fluid, which then drives the engine. The complexities and nuances of these engines are fascinating, and understanding them can deepen our appreciation for these technological wonders. In the following scenes, we're going to take a deeper dive into how these two types of engines function. First up is the internal combustion engine, the power behind most of the vehicles on the road today. Let's dive into the heart of this mechanical marvel. The internal combustion engine operates on a four-stroke cycle, also known as the Auto Cycle, named after its inventor, Nicholas Otto. Each stroke represents a different phase in the cycle, intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. During the intake stroke, the piston moves down the cylinder, creating a vacuum that sucks in a mixture of air and fuel. Then, the piston moves back up the cylinder in the compression stroke, compressing this air-fuel mixture to a fraction of its original volume. This compression makes the mixture more explosive, setting the stage for the next phase. The combustion stroke, often known as the power stroke, is where the magic happens. A spark plug ignites the compressed air-fuel mixture, causing it to burn rapidly. This rapid burning generates a high-pressure gas that pushes the piston back down the cylinder. The force of this downward movement is transferred through the connecting rod to the crankshaft, which then converts it into rotational energy to drive the vehicle. Following the power stroke, we have the exhaust stroke. The piston moves back up the cylinder, expelling the burnt gases out of the engine through an exhaust valve. And just like that, the cycle begins anew, ready to power the vehicle further. The beauty of the internal combustion engine is in its ability to convert the chemical energy stored in fuel into mechanical energy. It's a dance of precision timing and mechanical efficiency, a feat of engineering that has become a cornerstone of modern transportation. The internal combustion engine isn't without its drawbacks, however. It's not the most efficient engine design, as a significant portion of the energy from the fuel is lost as heat. And of course, there's the issue of emissions contributing to air pollution and climate change. So that's the internal combustion engine for you a marvel of mechanical engineering that powers our cars, trucks, and vans. Now, let's shift gears and explore the workings of external combustion engines. External combustion engines are a bit like the mysterious cousins of the more familiar internal combustion engines. They operate on the same fundamental principle of turning chemical energy into mechanical energy, but the way they go about it is quite different. In an external combustion engine, the combustion of fuel, that is the burning process, happens outside the engine. You heard that right, outside. This is the key distinction. Here's how it works. A separate chamber is used to burn the fuel, and the heat produced is used to heat a working fluid, usually water, creating steam. This steam is then used to power the engine. It rushes into a cylinder, pushing a piston, which in turn drives the mechanical processes. Once the steam has done its job, it's expelled, and the process starts all over again. It's like a continuous cycle of steam-powered energy production. Now you may be thinking, where have I seen this before? Well, if you've ever seen an old locomotive chugging along with clouds of steam puffing out, then you've seen an external combustion engine in action. The steam engine, a classic example of an external combustion engine, powered the Industrial Revolution and changed the course of human history. But it's not just about steam engines. Another example of an external combustion engine is the Stirling engine. Named after its inventor, Robert Stirling, these engines work on a closed cycle, where the working fluid is permanently contained within the system. They are known for their high efficiency and have found uses in various fields, from powering submarines to generating electricity. So, while external combustion engines might not be as common as their internal combustion counterparts, they are certainly not less interesting. They offer a fascinating glimpse into the myriad ways in which we can harness energy and transform it into motion. And that's the external combustion engine for you, a less common but equally fascinating piece of engineering. Now that we've explored both types of engines, it's time to put it all together. Internal combustion engines, or ICEs, are highly efficient, converting most of the fuel's energy directly into mechanical power. That's why they're the go-to for most vehicles today. However, 
Their need for high quality fuel and significant carbon emissions are undeniable drawbacks. On the other hand, external combustion engines, or ECEs, can run on a variety of fuels and are less harmful to the environment. They're often used in power plants and marine transport, but their larger size and lower efficiency make them less suitable for personal vehicles. Both engines have their place in the mechanical world, each excelling where the other falls short. It's a delicate balance of power, efficiency, and environmental impact. Whether it's the internal combustion engine that powers your car, or the external combustion engine that might power a steam train, both are incredible feats of engineering. So next time you turn on your car, take a moment to appreciate the mechanical marvel under the hood.